thousands have marched on Downing Street in Leeds and Manchester. Put the name Tommy Robinson into a search engine and you'll probably find something like this. Tommy Robinson was arrested today in Leeds in the UK outside the courthouse. I know the pretext for this is that he was interfering with jurors, but it, it, he was speaking his views on a public street. A few hours later, he was sentenced to 13 months in prison. It's the beginning, the first steps of a fascist government. He has been sentenced to death. Here's what actually happened. Tommy Robinson was arrested after broadcasting details of an ongoing court case on which the judge had placed reporting restrictions. He was already serving a suspended sentence after filming at a rape trial in Canterbury a year earlier. Then the judge said if he did it again, he'd go to jail. Now he's serving a 13-month sentence. Tommy Robinson, or Stephen Yaxley Lennon to give him his real name, broke the law. Reporting restrictions are sometimes imposed where broadcasting details of a case might prejudice the jury, possibly leading to the collapse of the trial. Now, this is not censorship. The restrictions are usually lifted after the case concludes. That said, it is unusual for someone to actually go to jail after breaking those restrictions. And Tommy Robinson's supporters believe he's being persecuted for expressing unpopular views. In the aftermath of Tommy Robinson's arrest, more than half a million people signed a petition calling for his release. It's the week of Donald Trump's visit to the UK. We want to meet some of Tommy Robinson's supporters ahead of a big rally planned for the weekend. This is clearly going beyond the sort of fringe groupings like the EDL. There's something going on here. We've been invited to Portsmouth to meet one of the organisers. He's told me he's excited about the movement. Their support is growing, he says, both at home and abroad. But at the last minute, he calls to say the interview is cancelled. What, what is the... Just look... What, what, what's, what's the reason? We've come all the way down to Portsmouth from London to specifically interview, interview you, and now you're suddenly turning around and saying Tommy Robinson's family don't don't want us to do it. This was to become a pattern. In the days before the rally, we approached half a dozen people across the country, activists and grassroots supporters. All of them either refused to speak to us or cancelled at the last minute. But on Trafalgar Square on Saturday, people were less reticent. There's something going on, not just in Britain, in Europe. You must know this. You work for news now. You know what's going on. There's a, there's a rise of people who've just about had enough, really. Had enough of what? Well, had enough. Well, we're all working class people. Sammy Robinson is a working class guy. Whatever you say, you, you, you're, you're pigeonholed as Islamophobic, racist, um, xenophobic. You, you, can't have a, you can't have an opinion about anything nowadays. You, you're tired with something. The gathering is part free Tommy, part welcome Trump. The theme is freedom of speech, a right that some exercised in relation to London's Muslim mayor. A balloon catches the eye of the police. It's clearly a response to the baby blimp flown by the anti-Trump protesters the previous day. But the police decide that Peppa Pig crosses a line. As officers try to remove the offending balloon, bottles are thrown. I think 
it's an absolute disgrace. I've here, I've come up I'm a mum. I've come up from Winchester to support Free Tom to free for free speech. But this is wrong. They know it's wrong. You don't need the majority, today. You no, don't they need don't. That shit. I know. This isn't us. This isn't the Free Tommy movement. These are these are big. These are. I'd say this is far right. To be absolutely honest with you, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but this is the causing trouble. It's meant to be a peaceful process, peaceful document, and I'm ashamed. What do you? Why are you here? What are the concerns that brought you here? Because in our country there is not one rule for all, there is one rule for one section of society and another rule for another one. For example, the balloon that she had, it's free speech, albeit it wasn't a nice one, but he can't pick and choose what people can and can't say, that is not free speech. The bottle throwers are clearly a small minority. Calm is quickly restored and the protesters congregate on Whitehall. There is support here from across the country and beyond. Do you mind if I just ask you why you've come here from Holland? Uh, about the name, Oh, yeah, I'm right. Oh, in English, right? Yeah, we can do it in English, yeah. That's better for us. I mean, I speak Dutch, but I don't think anyone... What, 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 uh, what can or... We're from Newsnight on the BBC. BBC? Yeah. No, thank you. Really? Fuck off, BBC, mate. <laughs> Is that the BBC? Hey, the BBC. Off, mate. Go in. This guy on, was mate. This guy was wrong. Wrong. So, so you're, you're Paul from Holland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me why you've come to England today. We think it is important to raise our voice because uh, yesterday it was the, uh, uh, Tommy and tomorrow it could be one of us. And why is it important to Dutch people? Uh, because it is a European question we have. Right. If we won't uh, work together in, in Europe, we will uh, lose it. Nationalists are internationalizing. Some of the concerns they have in common are anti-globalization and mistrust of the establishment. The concern is government corruption, yeah. covering up, yeah. covering up the facts. Yeah. Covering covering up the facts. Grooming covering gangs, the scandals, the, scandals. Yeah, it's the, the police, yeah. everything, the training they're beginning the police. Why do you think they're covering up? Well, you're going to rip up the nose for all nonsense, because yeah. the, the yeah. paedophile problem goes right to the top of our yeah. heart, of our establishment. Yeah. Why is it called The royal family are involved, very high. the big business is involved, politics is corrupt and up because of the paedophile problem. And it started with Savile, and it will heat, really, goes way back. Well, your job should be reporting on yeah. Savile. Open that can of worms up, Open and then you'll see out. everything that we do. You'll see. Yeah, because what a national hero. Then the speeches begin. The bravest man you'll ever meet. The crowd heard messages from right-wing politicians from the United States and Europe. Again and again, they raised the topic of rape and child sexual exploitation. He fought for our children, but the establishment wants to silence him. These are politicians who were once on the fringes, but in recent years have achieved unprecedented electoral success in Europe by tapping into fears about the issues of migration and Islam. The great leader of the UK Independence Party is Mr. Gerard Batten. UKIP's new leader signals he wants to take his party in a similar direction. The great British media do not want to talk about the group identity of the majority of the rapists or the ideology that inspires them. The rape gang members are predominantly followers of the cult of Mohammed. The founder of their cult was himself a paedophile and kept sex slaves. I spoke to one person who said they were uncomfortable with the rhetoric on stage. They didn't want to say so on camera. But for many, it felt like someone in authority was finally speaking their language. I've heard that Muslims believe that they can have sex with children. And do you believe that? I do believe that. I believe that in their country, they're, they're, they're allowed to have sex with children. What if I told you that, that wasn't true? Because it isn't true. I mean, I've been to many Muslim countries. I've been all over the Middle East and North Africa. It's definitely not true. Why, why are we being shown in this country that it is true then? Why are we being told and shown? I don't know, but who the are things... being told this I, I, only, I believe what I read, 
unless it's proven mm. to be not true. And I'm just wondering where you get this idea from. From what people, for instance, this rally, last month, we were told what Sharia law is. The rally on Saturday was funded with money from an American organisation called the Middle East Forum. It's run by an academic called Daniel Pipes, who's also helping to pay Tommy Robinson's legal bills. Robinson's cause has been championed by the American president's eldest son, as well as by his former chief strategist, Steve Bannon. He and I disagree about the religion of Islam, OK? But I don't think Tommy's a bad guy. I think he's a solid guy, and I think he's got to be released from prison. We did finally manage to get to speak to somebody involved in his campaign. They have ambitions. This is a litmus test. The Free Tommy campaign is a litmus test as to whether or not we can galvanise enough people, whether we can mobilise enough people, whether they can have enough of an impact on their members of parliament, on their councillors, or whether we need to start a, a new political party or, or, or take mass membership of political parties like Momentum did with the Labour Party. For us, this is a great test. Tommy Robinson's appeal will be decided before the end of the month. Whatever the outcome, his case has already become a focal point for a large number of people who feel that the institutions of this country are no longer working for them. That was Gabriel Gatehouse, and a little earlier I spoke to UKIP leader Gerard Batten. Joe Batten, you were at the rally that we mm. saw in the film. Uh, you compared there Tommy Robinson, who was jailed for 13 months after admitting contempt mm. of court, to the plight of suffragettes Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. Did you misjudge that one? And Robin Hood. Because the point I was making there was that people who have been in breach of the law, who were judged to be criminals at the time, have then, in the course of time, been proved to have been on, this, um, on this, the right side of a great cause and have actually become national and international heroes. Uh, and that's the point I was trying to make. That Tommy Robinson, I agree, has sometimes broken the law, and I said this to the meeting, and I'm not condoning that, I'm not actually excusing that, but what I said was, in the, in the great scheme of things, when these events are played out, he will be been to see in, on the right side of a struggle between good and evil. Tommy Robinson was not Nelson Mandela. He was not a political prisoner. You're quite he was right. a man who did the same mistake twice, who had a suspended sentence the first time and got in prison for it after a warning for the second. You're quite right, because Nelson Mandela was in prison several times in his career and he was actually convicted of terrorist charges and he was actually involved in the planning of killing innocent people. Uh, right. so, Tommy so Robinson has never done tonight, that. Then? Nelson Mandela no, no or... I'm trying to make the point to you that, uh, that you've, you've raised the subject of Nelson Mandela. No, you did in your speech. I was making you the comparison. Nelson Mandela to Tommy Robinson. I was Robinson. making the comparison. Do you think he's a political prisoner? I was making the comparison that people who have been convicted of very serious crimes then go on to be seen as heroes. And the point I was making about Tommy Robinson was, although he may have broken the law in some instances, in the great scheme of things, yeah. eventually he will have been to see he seemed to be on the right side of a great cause. OK, this wasn't apartheid. This was a man who, whose actions could have led to the collapse of a trial. The defendants could have walked free. That would have been fine work, wouldn't it? I've no, I never condoned that, but what my point was about defending him, and this is, was in the case today in the court, the way the lawyers were defending it was the way I described it, which was... This wasn't about free speech. It was an issue about was the law properly and fairly All applied. All those people were talking about free speech just now. All the people that we were talking to at the rally were saying that he had been covered up, he had not been allowed to speak freely. This was about a fair trial. Does UKIP believe in the rule of law in this country? We believe in the rule of our law, not the rule of the European Union's law, but that's a separate issue. The, but the what, rule the point, of law the point in I was, English courts. The point I was making, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't a rally about free speech. This was a rally about free Tommy Robinson. And I made the point at the beginning of my talk, which this wasn't about free speech, it was about whether the law had been fairly evenly, appropriately and proportionately in which applied, case you which appeal, is what the lawyers were arguing done. today. In your film, for example, the central message there seemed to me that people seem to be that they're not being represented by the politicians and the institutions and the people that run the country. Your speech was and broadly I think that's a Islamophobic one. and it was banging well, on about death cults. I now, do... I'm just wondering whether UKIP, as a, as a mainstream party who has achieved an extraordinary amount uh, at the polls and elsewhere, in recent years, wants to go mm. down that alley. You, you use the word Islamophobia. A phobia is an irrational fear. 
I do not have an irrational fear about Islam, neither do those people, but we do have a rational fear about the ideology and where it may be taking our country. Uh, and in terms of UKIP being a major party, I wish sometime in the last five months since I've been leader, Newsnight or other programmes had asked me on to talk about our EU exit plan, which is something I'd much rather be talking to you about tonight. If you would like to add your views about Brexit now mm. and the Chequers deal mm. and where you think the government is, right. I'm very happy to hear I did actually do a section of my speech about that. The problem that we have with uh, Brexit and Mrs May right from when she became Prime Minister is that she's going about it entirely the wrong way. If you ask the European Union how we might leave, you're not going to get a sensible answer because they don't want us to leave. And the plan that I laid out and, and wrote it all up a year ago would be that you actually repeal the 1972 European Communities Act as a first step, you leave the laws in place, but then you tell the European Union how it's going to work. You offer them a free trade deal if they want it, or you say, we'll go straight onto WTO terms, which now, of course, elements of the Tory party are saying exactly what I've been saying for the last two years. Mm. Um, and then you talk about the rights of citizens, we'll do a deal with you. And then you have, uh, you know, I, I can't even remember, it's like 175,000 or something bits of pieces of legislation that have come out of the EU over the last 45 years. You can't repeal all that in one go, but what you can do is prioritise how you work through it and do the important bits first.